The present invention, is a continuously variable transmission, formed by two shafts whose turning radii vary inversely proportional", in which, the drive shaft transmits its rotation to the driven shaft, by means of the drive belt. It is noteworthy that the turning radius of the transmission belt on each axis, is determined by the position of the sides of the transmission belt on that axis. Noting that, Unlike known systems, traction is carried out on the internal face of the transmission belt. Here we can see how the traction devices, in purple, exert the traction on the inner face of the transmission belt. This is explained in more detail, once the essential elements of this continuous variable transmission are exposed. To explain well how the traction is achieved on the internal face of the transmission belt, it is necessary to expose the essential elements of this continuous variable transmission, which are two parallel axes, references 1 and 2, various tube cones. Here you can see two tube cones, reference 3, of different diameter. They are called tube cones, because they are tubes in which one of their sides has a conical shape, reference 16. The angle of inclination of this conical area will be the one considered appropriate in each case. The tube cones have internal guides, reference 14, with a groove in the conical area, reference 15. The number of these internal guides will be those deemed necessary in each case. In this specific case there are three various traction devices. Here you can see a traction device, reference 4, in which the following parts are distinguished. The bulbs, reference 17, the lateral projections, reference 18, and the traction zone, reference 19. A transmission belt, reference 5 being to highlight the sides reference 20 which are sliding and determine the turning radius and the internal face reference 21 which is where the traction is exerted next we will see how some elements are integrated with others although we will do it in parts considering that this makes the exhibition more didactic here we see how the traction elements, 4 lilac-colored, fit into the tube cones, 3. In image A, it is seen how the traction element, 4, is embedded in the tube cone of greater diameter and in image B, it is seen how the traction element, 4, is embedded in the tube cone smaller in diameter. In both images, it is seen how the bulb, 17, fits into the internal guide, 14, of the tube cone, and it can be seen that the projection, 18, fills the groove, 15, of the conical area, so that the conical part remains uniform. In these images, a tube cone that goes between the green and yellow tube cones has been removed, in order to allow a better visualization. These images are two side views of some tube cones, displaced in such a way that the conical part is one after the other. And in this way it is appreciated that the tube cones together appear to be a single cone. This allows you to see that all the guides, 14, behave as if they were a single guide. In image B, the tube cones were sectioned, to better see the internal guide, 14. In this image, you can see how the transmission belt, reference 5 and in light blue color, fits between the pairs of tube cones. And to better see the process, in this example, we use a segment of the transmission belt, and four pairs of tube cones, which for a better visualization have different colors, yellow, the one with the smallest diameter, blue, 
green and red, the one with the largest diameter. As can be seen, the transmission belt supports its sliding sides, 20, on the conical sides, 16, of the tube cones. This position of the transmission belt being the one that determines the turning radius. If the tube cone pairs approach each other, they move the transmission belt perpendicular to the axis of rotation, away from it, and in this way, the turning radius increases. If the tube cone pairs are spaced apart, the radius of gyration decreases. In this animation, you can see perfectly how the transmission belt slides along the conical sides of the tube cones. We can also verify that with this system, the relationship between the minimum and maximum turning radius can be the one that is considered optimal in each case. It is only a matter of increasing the number of tube cones. In these images, several devices are sectioned for a better visualization and it can be seen how the traction devices, reference 4 and in purple, fit into the internal guides, 14, of the tube cone pairs. In image B, it is perfectly seen how the bulb 17 of the traction device fits into the internal guide 14 of the tube cone. It can also be seen how the projection 18 of the traction devices fill the slot 15 of the tube cones in the area occupied by the transmission belt, so that a perfect conical area remains. And it can also be seen how the traction zone, 19, of the traction devices is the one that is in contact with the internal face, 21, of the transmission belt. In these images it can be seen how the traction devices are embedded within the internal guides of the tube cones and how the traction devices move along these internal guides. Displacement that occurs is a consequence of the approach or distance between the pairs of tube cones. Generating with this movement an increase or decrease in the turning radius of these traction devices in their respective axes and inversely proportional. It should be noted that three traction devices per axle are used here. But their number will be the one deemed appropriate in each case. In these images, it can be seen as a whole. How the approach or distance between the tube cone pairs generates an increase or decrease in the radii of turns of the traction devices in their respective axes and inversely proportional. It is easy to see how this minimum number of traction devices, that is, three traction devices per axle, can be expanded by the number deemed appropriate in each specific case. In these images you can see how the displacement of the tube cones, transmission belt and traction devices occurs from maximum to minimum turning radius, and from minimum to maximum. It is reiterated that it is the displacement of the tube cone pairs, approaching or distancing each other, which determines the positioning of both the transmission belt and the traction devices. It is recorded that the transmission belt and the traction devices move in unison with the tube cones. Which means that the internal face of the transmission belt is at all times in contact with the traction zone of the traction devices. This will look much better with the rotating shafts.
Here it can be seen how, with only three traction devices per axis, which is the minimum number of traction devices that can be per axis. At least one is in contact with the internal face of the transmission belt. If there were four traction devices per axle, at least two traction devices would be in contact with the inner face of the transmission belt. But the number of traction devices could be perfectly eight with which there would be more traction devices that are in contact with the internal face of the transmission belt. The above are the basic characteristics of this new continuously variable transmission. Thank you very much for your attention.